Hi, I'm Steve, and welcome to Cardiac Cycling. What's this channel about? Well, it's about cycling and RVing. Both my wife and I are avid cyclists, and that's how we got into RVing. We've used an RV to get from one event to another over the years, and right now we're about to downsize. Today we have a 40-foot Class A bus. It's been great for our needs, but our lifestyle has changed. And with that change comes the need to change our RV. So what we're doing is we're looking at camper vans. Camper vans that we're looking at run about 20 to 21 feet in length. So it's a pretty significant downsize. But we think this is the right way for us to go at this point in our lives. My wife and I both enjoy cycling as a leisure activity and for its health benefits, the social connection, and in my case, I enjoy the competitive side of racing. I was introduced to racing in 2001 when a work colleague invited me to a race. One race and I was hooked. In my early racing career, I enjoyed road racing, time trials, and criteriums. But over the years, things change. Today, since about 2010, I focus almost exclusively on time trialing. It's a lot safer. I don't have to worry about somebody bumping into me, knocking me down, and ending up with a bunch of broken bones. In cycling, in my cycling career as an adult, I should say, I've had a broken clavicle. That never healed. Broken into three distinct pieces. They didn't do surgery. They should have. Uh, that's a whole mistake we won't even get into. My most recent cycling injury was two broken legs, and that was on a pleasure ride with my wife. In addition to time trialing, I do enjoy cyclocross. For those of you who don't know what cyclocross is, I define it as the kind of cycling you used to do when you were a kid. You ride on grass, gravel, dirt, asphalt, concrete, cobblestone. There's really nothing that's off limits. The courses are predefined, and for spectators, it's a great sport because you can see in a single event about 60% of the, of the race course. It's fast action um, for the cyclists themselves. It's got a lot of similarities to time trialing in that you go at a significantly hard pace for about 40-45 minutes. Now, that's cycling. So let's talk about the cardiac part of the channel's name. I've had three fairly significant cardiac events in my life. In 1998, knowing that I had a mitral valve prolapse, so that's a leaky mitral valve. People have them and go years without ever having any issue at lifetimes. In my case, over a 13 year period, the valve continued to get worse and worse in its leakage and finally reached a point where the docs said, you know, you, you really need to get this repaired or you're going to have some permanent damage. So, got it repaired. Had no real problems since then. Now, in 2014, I started noticing I had a, a, a heart rate problem. I've always monitored my uh, heart rate as I exercise and in 2014, my heart rate was all over the map. So, visit to the doc. Doc says, hmm, think you got AFib. Let's put you on a machine. So, EKG, visit with a cardiologist. Sure enough, not only did I have AFib or atrial fibrillation, but I was locked in. A lot of people have AFib. It goes up, goes down, stops, on again, off again. In my case, it was constant. I was not coming out of AFib. So, the recommended course of treatment was an ablation. I'll save you the details of that, but it is a surgical procedure where they fix AFib. In my case, because my AFib was so bad, the surgery took nine hours start to finish. Since then, my heartbeat's been pretty good with one exception, and it's really unrelated to the AFib. 
In 2015, I suffered a cardiac arrest. My heart stopped completely. I quit breathing. I had no pulse, no respiration. Clinically, I was dead. And, and it was eight minutes before my heart was restarted. Thanks to some quick thinking from some of my workmates, CPR was started immediately. We had an AED that was literally 20 yards away. That was grabbed. So eight minutes of CPR and six shocks with the AED, my heart finally restarted. I started breathing again on my own and rushed to the hospital where I had three surgeries. One surgery was to prepare, repair an artery that was blocked 100%. And that artery is the one which is the location of the infamous Widowmaker. The surgeon said a millimeter further and I would not have been able to be revived. No CPR, no AED, nothing. That would have been it. So the first surgery was to do a bypass around that 100% blockage. The next surgery was to insert two stents in two other arteries, one blocked at 90% and one at 80%. The third surgery was to give me my own AED commonly referred to as an ICD, which is short for implantable cardiac defibrillator. So if something goes wrong with my heart, I can get a AED shock right away. And the model I have also as a pacemaker. So if there's any irregular heartbeat that happens, I can get paced back into the appropriate timing of beats. I continue to race. Uh, about a year ago, my cardiologist suggested that I consider giving up racing. They've already put restrictions on how fast I can go in terms of heart rate, not miles an hour. Um, my maximum heart rate just before my cardiac arrest, my, my average heart rate, I should say, for my time trials was about 165 beats a minute. And now, they've limited me to 150. And, and frankly, with the medications that I'm required to take, it can be a challenge to get my heart rate up to 150 beats a minute. But I still enjoy racing, the competitive aspect, the goal achievement aspect, and the social side of racing. So for now, I keep going. My wife, and I will also do events together, uh, events commonly called rallies or fun rides, fundraisers. Um, those are the kinds of things we do together today. Now, if you found this channel, it didn't take you long to figure out that it's new. I have a lot of footage that I'm loading up. I started the channel primarily for connecting with family and friends. Um, showing race footage but as I've given thought to gee what can I do with this I know there's a lot of stuff that people look up how to um, and and I've done a lot of different things on my bike and with bikes um, nutrition training and when it gets to RVing the same thing we've been RVing since about 2003 I believe is when we got our first RV a fifth wheel camper and then went from that to the 40 foot bus so the thought is focus on cycling RVing the many aspects of cycling including nutrition repair and those types of things so if there's something that you would like to see along those lines of cycling and RVing let me know and I'll do my best to put something on the channel that addresses that. So that's the story. If you have any questions, post them. Be glad to answer them as best I can. If you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you would, because the more people who subscribe, the more others who get notified that, hey, there's a new channel up, and we can make even more connections, maybe help some other people out. And if you click the little bell, Anytime there's a new upload on this channel, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you enjoy what you see on this channel, please click the subscribe button.